So today we have something a little bit different. Instead of showcasing a deck on the ladder, I've challenged fellow streamer and YouTuber Tomatosaurus to the ultimate fight to determine the best player in the world. Make sure you go subscribe to their channel after you're done with this video. To make these fights more interesting, I've implemented a few rules. First, rather than building just one deck, we are each assigned three of the six playable characters, and we must win a game with all three of them. And to take things one step further, each deck must be using a character exclusive skill. This prevents us from playing the same deck all three times and also forces us off of shared skills like Hammer Crush Deal or Black Dragon Rising. With these rules in place, let's go over our decks. My first character is Luke and it's the Draconic Resonance deck you've already seen plenty of times. With the new ban list, we're not able to run Dragius or Bunker Strike anymore, but we do have Phoenix Dragon and Sports Dragon Pitcher. I'm currently running the Barrier instead of Draconic Pressure but hopefully we don't end up needing it. I think having the trap cards to stop the opponent's 2,500 attack point monsters, like those incoming Dion Keto the Boogie Masters, is gonna be better. Next up, we have a Royal Rebels Heavy Drive deck with Roa. Once again, this is a pretty standard looking deck list. We have three heavy metals to try to push through the opponent's board and get in for huge swings of damage. Go Cyclone to help deal with those spells and trap cards. Royal Rebel Growl, Rocker to debuff and add back heavy metals. Uh, Music Princess Recital is the trap of choice here, as if we end on a board like Rocker, uh, the barrier is not going to do anything to help us, and since we are having to tribute level 5 or higher monsters constantly, we're more likely to end with just one or two monsters on board than other decks in the game, meaning that negating an attack is going to be the most impactful thing we can do. We're also making use of the now slightly nerfed Aqua Engine, and this deck is overall pretty good, though I have not had a ton of success with it personally. I've always been using the Red Eyes Black Dragon variant of the deck, but we aren't able to use Archive skills in this duel. Uh -huh. Running out the list is a Shining Superstar draw Roman deck. And I know what you're thinking, hey, this isn't really a Psychic deck, but Shining Superstar draw is an exclusive skill, and I think as long as it's just one of the three decks, it's okay to do a little bit of cheekery. Um, at first I was really considering using a one side reverse draw on Roa, but I figured that would be a little bit too out of the spirit of the challenge to just bring three big aggro decks um, when we're supposed to be using these character exclusive skills. And while the draw cards are exclusive, I understand that they're not like the most themed character decks. Unfortunately, I just was not able to find any good psychic list that I was able to succeed with. I tried one out on the ladder and I lost like seven games in a row. So I'm just running aggro with Ghost Cyclone in place of Hammer Crush. With this, we're ready to start. Except, um, I forgot to record the first game, where Tomatoes Yuga gets a last minute victory over my Luke. But I'm not giving up. I'm confident that Luke is the true king of duels, and I'll be able to get them in the next one. I stick with Luke, they swap to Mimi, and we head into game number two. Game two starts with a regular set three, but then Tomato does this. So I'm gonna set, set, and then I'm gonna summon Mimi's ace monster, her most powerful and trusted companion throughout all of Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's, Multi-Strike Dragon Dragius. I thought that might be where you were going. I'm on the back foot and draw no tribute monsters. Luckily, I do have widespread ruin, which saves me when a second Dragius comes down the next turn. Phoenix Dragon is able to get me Gravity Press Dragon, but things are looking rough. With two weak monsters on board, I have to draw a tribute monster. No doubt, that it's the sign of an expert rush player when you, you can will the cards to the top of your deck. Like, the average player can't do that. Into the battle phase and hear the world's worst bluff. Mm, do I widespread it? That's the question. I think the answer would have always been yes, so that's definitely barrier. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, no, you got any information. Uh, oh, it could be anything. With an empty board, Tomato heals up with their skill and reveals a King's Majesty engine. But with just a single monster on board, we're able to bring out Slayer. Knowing they have the barrier set, we end up in an interesting situation with Gravity Press Dragon. I guess I'll get aggressive. I was considering whether to set the barrier or to summon the extra monster, basically. A Seahorse Carrier on turn 8 brings Tomato to a double tribute board that clears me away. But after a strong draw myself, we finish things out with exact lethal using a double tribute board of our own. With Roa and Roman left, I decide to queue with Roman. 
This is because I expect Tomato to stick with Mimi. This matchup isn't particularly strong, but I want to cue Roa into Gakuto if able, as Royal Rebel's Growl is the best out to Yami Roar in all three of my decks. I once again open with a bunch of set monsters and find myself facing down Dragius. On the next turn, I'm able to repay Tomato in kind. Thanks to a Paka Paka Chew, I'm bringing out two copies of Dragius myself. I trade off one and establish a huge lead. Tomato brings out a Dion Keto and we find ourselves in a stare down. Two 2500 attack point monsters, each backed up by a set card. Attacking is the worst thing one could do. I thin out my hand and pass. Tomato keeps it passive, but does lose Dion Keto to my widespread ruin. I draw Ancient Arise Dragon on the next turn and use it to protect Dragius from a potential widespread ruin. Unfortunately, the set card is King's Majesty, which prevents my push from dealing any damage. Here, Tomato finds themselves in a bit of a pickle and swings Summon Skull right into my barrier, leaving a huge opening. As we head into the next turn, I notice my deck is getting low, so I skip out on Ancient Arise Dragon's effect. I attempt to find a lethal, but run right into Babysitter Goat with a low level monster. However, the Aqua Aggro deck fails to find a convincing push and is only able to take out my Kanon on the next turn, rightly fearing another barrier. After I run into Ruin, Tomato finally clears my board, but with only two cards in deck, I pass and win the game. I'm now up 2-1 and just need to get a win with Roa. After some mind games to convince Tomato to bring in Gavin, we move on to game number 4 and this is my best chance to close out the series. Much like the previous games, we end up with a passive start. Tomato also sets a bunch of cards face down, allowing me to establish a board capable of beating over the low level monsters, and this goes on for several more turns. On turn 9, I finally get a chance to deal damage, but Widespread Ruin puts a stop to it immediately. Yami Ruler finally comes down, but I punch right through the lock by tributing Rocker to recycle one of my Growl. I lose my Widespread Ruin in the process, but after another weak push, my brain starts to calculate. I'll let the recording speak for itself. I think I have to... Seahorse Carrier. Grab this. Um, summon, then growl, which unfortunately I'm not going to be able to use. But I can go for a heavy metal. Mm hmm. Expected this. Again, I know where to play around it. Destroy this one. Um, Nessus the Star Knight. And then is Ruin got Ruin is gone. Which means... Yeah, I was forced to use it to make room for my back for it. If, to get spell and traps out of my hand. If I go like this, I can play around a recital. And without widespread, this should be game. Did what I the... just miss something? It's possible. Where did my guy go? Um, I ate him. Oh, Phantom Bind. I guess you were running it the whole time. Mm. Good game. Um, Ooh, I guess yeah. I'm glad that oh, I did that. <laughs> with that... That is going to be the Hylister victory, three to one. When you play card <laughs> games, the most important things are to load your dice, um, stack your deck, and then cut all of the opponent's good cards to the bottom. That's what I've learned from playing in card <laughs> shops over the years. So I made sure to make use of all three of those during this event. I was going to ask, uh, yeah, how, how, how much, much time did you spend doing? like choosing the decks for this? Or did you just go like, well, I'm Yuga, here's my 7 Axel Road deck from the ladder. Let's just bring that. So I was debating about whether bringing more fun decks, mm -hmm. but like I feel like I probably brought the most competitive of each I could have and still got 3-1. So I'm quite happy I didn't bring uh, some like goofy fun variants, like Bender Break or something, or I mean, like I guess for Gavin it probably would have been Blue Falcon, but even Blue Falcon like it's playable. It's not yeah. It's not fantastic, but it's playable. I know a lot of people in like the 
normal rush format don't ultimately enjoy the duel links as much but i think they've done a really good job there are 190 cards in the game and if we look mm. at like the last four weeks there are like 15 playable decks listed on the site and that doesn't even include things like dark magician which i think is not great but it's like i'd say it's at least as good as tengu um like there are like 15 to 16 decks in a format with only 200 cards which i think is like an incredible accomplishment oh yeah i think a lot of people will look at that and say a lot of those decks are very samey like a lot of them as like draggiest aggro piles uh and also when you look at like topping tournament lists we mm -hmm. tend to be seeing around the same five decks but even that in itself right seeing five different decks that are all different enough and competitively viable and all able to win tournaments or top tournaments i think is a sign of a really nice diverse meta which is something that i personally always look for in a card game like i know there are a lot of people that are like oh i, I love tier zero formats i just want to play tier zero all the time and have the mirror and that, that yeah that's not me i'm, I'm variety is the spice of life for me yeah i definitely like having um more decks than fewer um it's there's always going to be something that's the best um Sometimes it's a little bit too much. Like, I think Dragonic Resonance is still a good deck. So it's a little... It, it definitely deserves the hits, but it's still playable. And there are still a lot of things to do. Um, you're right. We could, like, um, fold aggro and bubble era into, like, one deck type. The Red Eyes deck is basically, like, Royal Rebels and Yami Ruler. And it's one of those two. So you can kind of get rid of that. But five like tournament winning decks and then like 10 decks that can actually still take games is way better than the original format like i mean you had dragon caster um pure dragons i guess um the beast gear as like a funny tee -hee thing and then it's just like psychics felt unplayable um we got thunder beetles which did absolutely nothing um, the cat support from the original Sevens era, like, Lost Cat is a cool card, but doesn't do anything, because your deck is all monsters. Um, like, the they Stadia, had... you know, was a yeah. cool character. Mm-hmm. But, a like... Silly cat hat. So, with the same number of cards, if we look at Sevens, like, where the actual card game was, there were maybe, generously, like, four decks in the game. And Dragoncaster was well above the rest of them. Whereas here, we have, like I, like you said, five very good decks and another five to ten like below it. I think the big thing is that we don't have many shufflers available to us at the moment. And mm -hmm. I think the big one and like kind of the first widely used one was, I mean, outside of you know, in in physical, it would have been Dark Revelation, right? I mean, oh sure, was. sure. But other than that, I think it's probably like machines with the Mirror Innovator. And if we do get Mirror Innovator soon, which I would love to, to see, but I don't know if... I keep going back and forth with, is that card too strong? Would it be yeah. okay in Duel Links? I... But if we hmm. do get it, again, it's a way to just keep refilling your deck again and again and again. And you just shuffle other copies of itself, so you always have more and more shufflers in the deck. And I guess Paku Paku Chu is kind of the closest thing we have to that right now. But that's only one where Mirror Innovator yeah. can be three. And I think um, before the Light Machines, when was uh, Siesta Torero, which I hope we don't actually get in the next box. I do not want this card. Um, but that, that has yeah, a shuffle three monsters. It's generically good. Right, yeah. Well, and like it's- to mention, it's 1200 attack. So you can mm -hmm. play it under all of the skills that are like, oh, no 1400 or more outside of your type. Like it's 1200, it is a very strong effect and it puts back three monsters, which like, it, this could say, like, shuffle three monsters from your graveyard into the effect, into the deck, effect, this card gains one attack point, and people would play this in the current format, I think. Mm -hmm. Just because getting those drag geas and everything into the um, deck again is just so important. Exactly, exactly. It's a, it's a tricky balance, right? Because we already have a lot of cards that are considered, like, staples, like Thunder the Thunder, mm -hmm. a Speedy Performer. Uh, I guess you could say Paku Paku Chu, but you know, it has an entire engine attached to it and the same thing for Seahorse. Uh, but I think Siesta is one of those cards that would almost without a doubt be in every deck that would be allowed in. So 
Yeah, <laughs> Which it's, is it's more or less all of them. Yeah. Except for yeah. Resonance, I, I guess. Do, um, I, I would like to see more shufflers in general, though. Just cards to just put cards back in the deck. The, the issue with that being... So I, I want that because I don't want deck outs to happen. But, mm -hmm. again, the flip side is always recycling really powerful cards is always really scary. But I suppose we do have the barrier now, which does let you recycle any monster you want. So we've already got that. Oh, you know, you can maybe, if the stars align, get your Dragius out like six times in one game. Maybe seven if you've got the monster reincarnation. But let's be honest, that never happens, right? You're never right. actually summoning Dragius I mean, if, the game. If you've summoned seven Dragius and haven't reduced the opponent's life points to zero <laughs> yet, I feel like you're doing something wrong. Um. Uh, your opponent's got a defense mode yammy ruler. Right. And, uh, you have no way to boost, and that's what that's. Oh. You just sat there staring at it the entire time. 